Two Broke Rednecks present. Well, this film is going to blow. It's also a curse. Lemody Rockwood sounds like a name for Dave Ryder. We're on the night train. Love that stuff. Turn back. Took a lot of courage to get on this train. And alcohol. I wonder what will happen from now on. I wonder. A lot has happened in the last year. Our first year of marriage. <laughs> Gee, we got a good start. She married Gomer Powell. A wonderful honeymoon. We were so fortunate. Our housing problem was taken care of. Pete's mother owned a two-family house. She was a widow and... Hey, it's Betty White. We were going to live downstairs. Pete had a good job. Worked in the same plant as my dad. But dad didn't introduce us, though. We met at the church. It was snake-shaking night. <laughs> I still haven't forgiven daddy for not telling me about Pete. And what a drunk he is. In our two years of courting and engagement, we had come to know a lot about each other. And we had learned to love each other in a way that stood the test of <laughs> two years' time, anyway. Then Pete told me he was my master. And there we were, in our own place. A place that was to be our home, at least for a while. We had to unpack, <laughs> and we were both so tired. From all the kinky sex. Great! He's burning our last film! Daddy! Duchess, Madam, here is thy royal throne. Seat thyself in royal splendor while I shall get thee thy royal <laughs> cup of coffee. <laughs> Is creamed and sugared exactly to my taste. And nutty I'll with a light pear taste. Master for evening coffee from this day forward. From this day forward. To have and to hold. Oh, Pete. We're going to be so happy together. Until I murder your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I can see her bra. I feel so comfortable with you. I feel like... <laughs> I feel like I can take my shoes off. I'll always love you, Daddy. Even if you see oh. my feet, those things are horrible. Wouldn't it be wonderful if time would stand still? If we could always keep what we have tonight. If the train were to derail, killing them both, we would have a happy ending! From the beginning, we were learning to live together. And to love together. Learning to adjust different sexual responses. Lady, we could care less about your sex life. And marriage is far more than loving together and enjoying companionship. It's making decisions together. And we had to learn to plan as partners. That first Monday morning, I was so proud of my man going out to earn a living for us. Even though and he was breaking so knees for a loan shark cooking our first married meal. Then, suddenly, it was time for Pete to go to work. He said he didn't want to go, but he was a responsible married man now. Well, when you marry, you have to adjust to many changes. And I, well, we had decided I should quit my job when we married. Maybe I should say quit my paycheck. I still had a job. As but this job by, does have its parts. Sometimes I regretted that decision to quit my job. For one thing, I missed those paychecks. 
and staying home was hard. <laughs> she said hard. <laughs> <laughs> I had to work out. But there were satisfactions in being a married pair. Sadly, it One wasn't thing in was the bedroom. was partnership in handling the money. Conflicts over money can be a real problem in marriage. But we decided together how Pete's salary would be spent. Mostly at the track. We didn't always agree, but we decided together. So our joint decisions on this and other problems of home management helped in my adjustments from a working girl to a non-employed wife. Aided by little bits of fun and thoughtfulness, the partnership flourished. Your lips taste like poop. Another thing, Pete's contributions to my sense of accomplishment. I had a lot to learn about cooking and keeping house. And sometimes those things can seem unimportant and dull. Believe me. Mmm, shit cake! appreciate her husband's appreciation. And, of course, that works both ways. I tried to learn about Pete's job. Sometimes I shared his enthusiasms. And there were times when I had to help absorb his frustrations. That's when he would spank me with a paddle! Partnership. Of course, our marriage had its ups and downs. They all do. But I guess we had worked out pretty good adjustments on affections and our sex life. And, and our love of bondage skiers. Adjusting to each other. Adjusting to our marriage. Sort of showed us how to face these problems. But on another potential source of trouble, in-laws. When we first planned to move into that two-family house, I thought of all those mother-in-law jokes. Little did I know Still, they were true. They couldn't apply to nice people like us. But there were things like... I was planning my first bridge luncheon. Honey, Jane can't come on Thursday. I wonder who I should get for a fourth. Mm. Mother plays a good game of bridge. Yes, but... Maybe she wouldn't enjoy playing with a bunch of giddy girls. Oh, honey, she love it. She likes young people. Why, just today she said she wanted to get a hold of some young of stuff. I asked her. She insisted on bringing a fancy cake. It was delicious, everyone said. But the bitch that wouldn't let me party. have any. But it wasn't my party. Afterwards, Pete said he was glad I had asked her. Said she could have seen from upstairs that something was going on. Might have felt left out. How did I feel? As if we were living in a huge goldfish bowl. Club, club. But I couldn't explain it to Pete. Oh, it wasn't all bad. Pete's mother and I had good times together. Especially in the bedroom. Things. I could learn a lot from her. Her experience in getting bargains. Her little tips on Pete's special likes and dislikes. But, well... One afternoon, Pete stopped in upstairs to deliver a package his mother had asked him to pick up. He found she had hired a male stripper and stayed for the show. He to his mother's on his way from work two or three times a week. I didn't mind so much supper being late. Just the banging on the floor from myself. him nailing her. But somehow, it seemed on those nights, we always got into an argument. Sooner or later. I tried to tell Pete how I felt. But it was no use. He'd just get sore and make some crack about my family. And how my mother worked my in a brothel. Was pretty wonderful. My dad and I were real pals. We talked things over. About Pete's mother, I mean. Dad could understand. So could Mom. We had some good chats together on Saturday afternoons when Pete would play golf. With the girls from the office. It was a joy to see the way Mom and Dad understood each other. Anticipated each other's needs. Sometimes without a word being spoken. They had really grown together in their marriage. Why couldn't we? Because you're a bitch? Well, 
In more ways than one, it was a long fall and a cold, hard winter. Pete was making Meanwhile, me sleep outside. We were still working out other adjustments together. Little things. My serving liver and learning to enjoy it because Pete liked it so much. Granted, I have no idea how I kept that shit down. Big things. Pete's realizing that a wife still likes to go out once in a while. And remembering the anniversary of our engagement. With tickets to a special show he knew I'd been wanting to see. Nudes on ice. Married life isn't all Hollywood moonbeams and honeysuckle. But it can be mighty satisfying at times. Also a horrible nightmare at times. Came spring. And my first spring house cleaning. And, well... It was Pete's mother. But it wasn't that she criticized me, or even told me how to do things. But somehow, whatever I did, she did too. But in a different way. And it seemed to me she always thought her way was better. Her way is better. There were so many little situations that probably wouldn't have mattered if we hadn't lived in the same house. But I felt so awkward and inferior and mad. That evening, after supper, I burned I her the alive. Time seemed ripe to talk to Pete about us, but suddenly, Daddy, I, uh, I got a surprise in uh, today's mail. I may have won one million dollars from Publishers Clearinghouse, but uh, way over in Central City. I'm going to be the Flash's it's sidekick. It's time we get away. Do something really decisive about the influence of your parents on our marriage. My parents? Huh. Listen to me all the way, honey, before you get mad. It's time we... Well, we've got to talk this thing out. You don't know what it's like working in the same plant as your, your wife's father. Dad likes you, Pete. Why, well, just the other day so he said how he wants to slip you the sausage. Your dad's been swell. Try to understand me. It means so much to have you understand. I want to be a puma. Golly, if you feel that way, Pete, you just do. There must be reasons. Well, they, they may not seem very important to you. Tell me, Pete. Well, this Incan said I had the power of the Puma. Like, well, when I got that promotion in December, you said how grand it was of your dad to help. I mean, praising me to the boss and all. Oh, I felt as though I, I earned that raise myself. And stories of influence like that didn't help me with the other fellas. They all beat me up and, and took my lunch money. Dad's efforts. I wanted... I wanted you to appreciate mine. Darling, how could I have been so stupid? Well, you do have the IQ of a rock. Folks and spoke of their house as home and compared us with your folks. I understand. Come to think of it, Pete, I, I suppose part of me never really did get married. But the part that's important how to him did. did. Really build our marriage with part of me wanting them to approve everything I did. Gosh, what a difference when you see the other fellow's point of view. No, if I can just figure out how to tell Pete I killed his mother. But we did have to face the other issue. It was hard telling Pete about his mother so he wouldn't think of it as a counterattack. He tried to understand, and I tried to be fair about it. I could see that I'd been on the defensive and hadn't understood that a widow might sort of need a man around the house. That's why I introduced her to old man Jenkins. But both of us needed to grow up more. Needed to grow away from our parents a bit more. We've grown up a lot just tonight, haven't we, hon? We no longer in arguments with Nina, Nina, Nina. Together. <laughs> sure helps a lot when you can bring things out in the open. Talk them out together. How do you feel about Central City, hon? 
It's stupid. Or er, exciting. I'd like to get away to a new job. Be out my home. And it is a big change and maybe we don't need to run away from our parents now. Uh, yes we do. Away. You really want that new job, Pete? And that's what we want. Yes, it's a big change. New friends, new home, church, new adjustments in living. There'll be other problems ahead. Bigger problems. Like Pete's infidelity. Working together. Hi, honey. Hi, where have you been? Talking to the conductor, trying to get Pullman accommodations. And I got them. Ooh. Why does it say for three? Hey, Duchess. What am I doing on this seat? <laughs> Pete and I will both miss our folks. All of them. The grandmothers would have made good babysitters. If we hadn't killed them. But wherever Pete's job takes us, even back to our hometown, I know we'll work things out together as partners. Can I gouge my eyes out now? No, you must suffer more films. Dear Bark Rednecks, we don't make bad movies, we make bad movies better.